polveni maneni na maneni kazi na mkele kile kwen kubo yam di kala o kuba ni trofe i subscribe ga se zanze kwe screen ne like and di abulela aman windi aza kubuya e monti in gomso and gole si shlanu Finally, boxing is back in East London, my favorite boxing place in the world at the ICC uh, in East London. And it's a big card presented by Ayanda Matiti of Kaba Promotions. And uh, it's headlined by none other than Nkosinati Mabere Joy. Now, he was going to defend his IBO uh, World Strawweight title against Ayanda and Dulani. But uh, Joy failed to make weight, which means, uh, it's my understanding at this moment, that uh, the 12 rounder, the title will only be on the line for Ndulani, as uh, Joy has now vacated it on the scales, which is unfortunate that IBO belt is not such a big deal overseas, but uh, it does carry some value in South Africa. It's sort of the best of the rest of the world titles. And Joy, of course, is ranked in the top 10 by none other than The Ring, for whom I am a contributor. So he has resurrected his career as a world-class fighter, but he's also 37 years old. And like everybody fighting this weekend, all the South Africans, he also has to shake off more than a year's worth of ring rust. Now, Ayanda Ndulani, he's a guy who's got a record of uh, uh, 10, uh, 2 and 3. He has, uh, in his last two fights in 2019, he dropped the decision to Sipa Manla Baleni. Then he won uh, a decision uh, over Ngantweni. And uh, in his other, other loss, you know, he, he got stopped by Kordisa Magusha, who, who we know is a very good South African champion, former South African champion. But he managed to reverse that loss to Magusha, which tells me that uh, he has that intestinal fortitude, fortitude. He's a guy who can correct his mistakes and come back. I haven't seen that much of Ndulani. He's a good boxer. But he does make mistakes. He does get hit sometimes. Sometimes he performs better than other times. On paper, Joy, you know, with his track record, a former IBF uh, strawweight champion, uh, he's held uh, IBO belts at at at, uh, at both strawweight and 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 uh, uh, and uh, I think like flyweight as well. So he's a seasoned campaigner. So Joy has been in against the best. He should uh, uh, beat Ayanda Ndulani. But now the, the question is, is he going to do that? Because he didn't make weight. Why is that? Uh, he, he, was, he started as a strawweight. He went up to uh, junior flyweight, back down as a strawweight. Is it because he's struggling with the weight? That uh, he simply can't make it. It becomes harder as you get older. And uh, this will simply mean that uh, Joy will be stronger on the night and possibly overwhelm uh, Ndulani. Or could it be that uh, he didn't train quite as he should have trained and that uh, inactivity is affecting him ne negatively? I know there's also some purse issues around the, the fight uh, that's been reported in the media here and there. So that makes it interesting. I don't know what to make about Joy, make of Joy missing weight. I don't know, this is perhaps a golden opportunity for Ayanda uh, Ndulani to seize that IBO belt uh, that is only going, going to be on the line for him. Um, so, I don't know. Some older fighters, these long breaks, uh, it works well for them, like Reino Liebenberg. We'll have to see how it's going to work out for Eki Butler, who's coming off two years of inactivity on, on Saturday, on the following night. And sometimes it uh, doesn't work out so well uh, like, for, for instance, Moruti and Talani, although I think that had to do with a style and the performance of Sonny Edwards as well. So there is a, is a little bit of a, a warning sign there. Although, um, even though, of course, in Joy is, is, is older and uh, it's all the inactivity, Ayanda and Dulani also has an inactivity to contend with. So I'm going to go with a chalk and... Uh, I'm going to say that Mabere and Kosinati Joy, he looked so good in his last fight against uh, Joey Kanoi, he's going to prevail and uh, and I think he's, he might overwhelm Ayanda Andulani and perhaps uh, stop him late in the fight. But I could be wrong. If Ayanda Andulani boxes smart, uses his legs, uh, tightens everything up nicely and uh, doesn't get caught or get, get, get in front of that body attack of, of, of the southpaw uh, and Kosinati Joy, um, he might be able to spring the upset, but I'm going to go with Mabere in this fight. 
Now, uh, they, don't, they don't match them, give them easy fights there in East London. Not only Baba Promotions, also Rumble Africa. Uh, they, they, they tend to throw in their stars at the deep end. I mean, uh, Sieve and Onchinga in the, in, in, at, at uh, Bergo, where I was fortunate enough to be ringside. He had a, a lot to contend with there against Christian Araneta. It was not an easy fight. And uh, now there's this, another guy who's, who was started as a big star, the big next thing. He's only had five professional fights, four and one. He lost his last uh, professional fight when they threw him in and only uh, his fifth outing against Nkosi Derebe, Sam Nkosi Nati Joy. He started off well, but then Joy uh, started taking over the experience uh, showed and he sort of overwhelmed uh, Chicha to win a decision. Now Chicha, just like Eki Butler, is coming off two years of inactivity. That's a long, long time of in, uh, inactivity. And who is he fighting after coming back from two years? None other than Javi Kanoi, uh, against whom, uh, of course, Inati Joy looks so good. Now, Javi Kanoi, we know him very well here in South Africa. He's one of the Filipino fighters that I, that I, that I always like to watch because he brings my aim and I respect that about him. He doesn't come to, to mess around. He is a bit wild. He is a bit rough. He's very aggressive. He comes forward. He, he tries and takes, takes your head off. You know, he gave Eki Butler a good go before Butler stopped him. And then uh, against Simpiwe Konko, he knocked Konko down heavily. And I think uh, Simpiwe Konko was perhaps a bit lucky that the fight got stopped because of a cut, that, of a, of a headbutt induced cut. And it became a technical draw because I think he was in for a long evening against Kanoi. And then uh, against uh, Joy, he got appointed. Uh, but now, after two, two years of inactivity, but Slan Chicha is fighting Joey Kanoi. Perhaps his hand does know something I don't. Uh, but I think that's one heck of a dangerous fight for a guy to be taking after a two year layoff. Uh, who's re relatively inexperienced as a professional, although he has a deep, big amateur background. Now, Chicha is a southpaw, he's very quick hands, he moves well. But he does like does tend to sometimes be a bit of a one arm bandit, just using with his using his lead right jab jab jab, hooks to the body, and not, not using his, his left hand. That might have been because of injuries. But he did look like a one arm bandit two years ago against uh, of course Inati Joy. Now that's not going to be enough against Joey Kanoi. And I remember Kanoi fought in uh, 2019 against Joy, but he also got a fight in here in 2020. So I think he will have a lot less cobwebs against the Slanshla Chicha. And, and that worries me about this fight. Um, Chicha has the skills, the boxing skills and the speed to outbox Joey Kanoi. Uh, of course, Kanoi, we know, he's a wild man in there. He comes to fight. He puts the pressure on you and he tries to take your head off. Uh, and if he, if he had a few uh, interim fights, I might, I might, I might, I probably would pick Chicha to, to eke out a points decision here. But that two years of inactivity, getting thrown in against Joey Kanoi, yes, we are limited uh, uh, with options that we have now in this COVID environment. Um, but I kind of smell an upset, and I'm, I'm going to go for uh, Joey Kanoi to post that upset and cause a surprise and uh, perhaps overwhelm and slunch like Chicha there. I might be wrong. Of course, I'm always rooting for my uh, South African fighters, but I think it's a tall ask for Nslantla Chicha after two years away to take on Joey Kanoi straight on in his first fight back. But if he does, he would have launched his uh, international career because Kanoi is still a name out there in the strawway, in, in the junior flyweight division internationally. So uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, but it's a good card because there's a lot of question marks drifting over Ngosinati Choi and Ayanda Ndulani as well as now in Shlanshla, Kilimanjaro Chicha and uh, Joey Kanoi. So it's fights that I'll be watching with interest. Um, so unfortunately there's still no crowds allowed. I can't wait to see you guys when I when I get back there, when we can have a fun and have a crowd in the Orient Theatre or the ICC. So until we see each other again, Pakamisani is on luck.